Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Realm of Unknown. I am your host, Shane, and I hope everyone's doing well. It's been a little bit. I kind of took a pause from recording. Um, we had a compilation episode as of the recent episode for June, and uh, I it's been interesting. I've slowly been unpacking. I've now transitioned into the new place that I'm at now. And this will actually be the very first recording. Uh, you probably can hear the audio is a little different. It's not as soundproof <laughs> as preferred, but I am working on that to get it nice and crisp. But yeah, this is the first time uh, recording in the new space, and this is going to be the very first episode that we have for like r for real out of June. Uh, obviously, again with the compilation episode that was for you know Patreon stuff, whatever. But today is the very first one, and uh, it feels good. It feels good to be recording back again. Even more so, we have a ghost story for this one, and we have not done a ghost story in a while. All of last month was, you know, monsters here in PA, and I forget what we had before that. I feel like we haven't had a real good haunting in a fairly long time, at least as of recent recordings. So I kind of just want to get into it. But before we kind of fully get into the uh, history and the background of what we're going to be talking about, I do have two promos that I would like to run. Uh, we are doing promotions again in order to showcase some fellow podcasts, some uh, fellow spooky podcasts and creepy stuff, and uh, just sort of kind of spread the word and do some collaborations and just kind of ease into the summer with some fun sharing of promotions. So without a further ado... The uh, first of the two that we have is from a really amazing show that we have featured a good while back, and that would be October Pod. If you need an extra shot of horror or spookiness this summer during your long road trip, then sit back and take a listen to the October Pod podcast. I'm Edward October. There's only one way to serve a fine bourbon, poured neat and slowly savored. The retro horror stories served by October Pod are just as refined as an aged bourbon, but now there are two ways to enjoy them. Subscribe to October Pod Home Video on YouTube. There we debut our latest true, true-ish, and or classic tales of horror and the paranormal on the first and third Tuesday of each month. And now you can pour yourself a double serving of October Pod. Find October Pod After Midnight. That's October Pod AM for short on your favorite podcast app. There, on the second and fourth Tuesday of the month, we serve up tall glasses of our most horrifying spirits, specially curated for you to savor. Each episode of October Pod AM lasts about an hour, just long enough to sip a good scotch by the fire. Now there are two ways to enjoy retro horror thrills of impeccable taste. Find all our links at OctoberPodVHS.com. OctoberPod. Retro horror for bold individualists. And second for the promotions that we have this week, it comes from a fellow paranormal spooky podcast, a fellow Philadelphia-based podcast, and a podcast that you must stop and go back to the very beginning in order to listen properly. We have Dead Time Stories. Take a listen. Hey guys, I'm Sarah. And I'm Stephanie. And we're the hosts of Dead, Dead Time, Time Stories. Stories. Dead Time Stories, with a Z, is a weekly podcast where we tell you stories of ghosts, hauntings, mysteries, conspiracies, the supernatural, paranormal, the generally eerie, spooky, and all around weird. If you like scary stories, witty banter, and classy broads, we're your ghouls. Gals. Gals. Some of our stories include Eastern State Penitentiary. No. And where is it? Is it where is Does it, it sell up 12? No! <laughs> the Gettysburg Dime Museum. They were like, show starts at five, Mr. President. He was like, thank you, five. <laughs> no, 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 seven. He was like, thank you, five. <laughs> <laughs> Fort Mifflin. So the Americans burned down their own fort. They were like, oh, you, 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 British want, this? you want this? Come Come and get welcome it. to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> and more. New episodes are posted Thursdays at midnight on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Listen and subscribe, rate and review today. 
And we are back. All right, guys. Definitely before we do listen to anything, please, please give October Pod and Dead Time Stories a listen. Check them out on Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to, you know, Spotify, whatever. I can't list all the rest of them off the top of my head right now. I don't know why I'm blanking. But they're both really incredible podcasts. They're both ones that I've done some promotions with in the past, and they do both incredible, incredible work on their stories and the tales that they provide on a weekly and very frequent basis. Uh, they're just an amazing shows and amazing hosts. So definitely give it a check if you are into spooky and creepy stuff. So for today, for us here at the Realm of Unknown, I've been teasing that we are having a ghost story again and to... Sort of just kind of give away to this. Uh, this was a Patreon poll submission for last month. I was running something as a sort of obscure haunted state type thing. Um, more or less states that we have not particularly covered that well here on the show. And of the four that we had provided, the winner was the state of Montana. Now, Montana is not super well-known for its hauntings. It has a few locations. Um, obviously, the uh, Hillview Manor is is there, and a lot of shows cover that. Virginia City over there is relatively, has a strange history to it, but I it's a town overall that's haunted, and I, I did want to cover one that was a bit more not heard of, or at least not covered by other shows or other... Um, just general podcast coverage, because I, I, I like to hone in on little smaller things, and uh, I kind of stumbled across this gem, which is very Stephen King a shining. Like, it has the look, it has the feel, it, it very much gives me that vibe, and as we get through it, uh, you'll begin to understand why. So today we are covering the Many Glacier Hotel, located in the Glacier National Park in the state of Montana. So, let's get into it. The Many Glacier Hotel is a historical hotel located on the east shore of the Swift Current Lake in the Glacier National Park here in the United States. And the building is designed as a series of shallots. It's essentially a style of house. So whenever I mention that word, it's just going to essentially tie to a, a building. Uh, each being up to four stories in height, and they stretch for a substantial distance along the lake shore. It basically hugs the lake. The buildings are in a Swiss Alpine theme, both on the outside and on the interior. And the foundation is made of stone with the wood superstructure surrounding it and primarily being made of wood throughout. The outside is finished with brown painted wood sidings and the window framing of balconies with a wood sewed uh, Swiss sort of jigsaw like pattern on the outside. On the inside, uh, the lobby space is actually surrounded by balconies. The lobby is four stories in and of itself and the balconies have railings that are patterned again with a Swiss design. Now, the structure, or I should say the construction of the Mary, uh, the Mary, God, I'm thinking Mary Celeste for some reason, the Many Glacier Hotel was done in 1914, and it was actually finished relatively quickly, at least in my opinion, finishing in a single year, wrapping up in July 4th of 1915. Now, the Great Northern Railroad or I should say railway, uh, was establishing a series of hotels and sort of backcountry locations within the park. And the Many Glacier Hotel was sort of the, you know, the best of the best of this uh, sort of collection of hotels. And it was given the name the Gem of the West. Uh, this was part of an effort by a Louise W. Hill, who was the president of said railway company, along with his son, James J. Hill, uh, who he, he and of himself established the uh, Glacier National Park as a destination resort area and very much promoted it as the quote-unquote American Alps, which if you're not familiar, I, I think we actually discussed this in the episode for Jim Thorpe in which I mentioned my visits there. Jim Thorpe here in Pennsylvania is also kind of known as like the Swiss county or whatever. Like it has that moniker to it. And it seems like if you're cold, if you're a mountain space here in America, you're just kind of given that weird Alps connection back in the day. It, it's just something that I noticed and I was like, oh, I 
we have that here in Pennsylvania too. Okay. But okay, so getting back to it, to this end, so to the idea of kind of promoting it as the American Alps, uh, the Hills chose a Swiss style for the hotel and the surrounding buildings. And the Glacier uh, Park Lodge, which was previously known um, as the Glacier Park Hotel, along with the many Glacier Hotel, which we are primarily speaking of, were intended to be the core two structures of this push to be a uh, resort destination. The chalets were intended to entice visitors to leave the hotel, to go outside, and to kind of explore the more rustic manner of the overall environment. And uh, they were especially used during the early 1900s, obviously shortly after their constructions, when it was first opened. And uh, one of the main attractions was apparently the park itself, along with horseback rides. So it's Montana. You can't, there's not a whole lot. And it's cold. So today, the hotel remains an historical character. Many of the rooms are either uh, have a, or I should say, many of the rooms have a view of the Swiss Current Lake, along with the surrounding mountain scenery. It's pretty much a flip of the coin. Uh, if you're on one side of the building, you get a beautiful lake. On the other side of the building, you got a beautiful mountain range. Kind of a win-win. The hotel is uh, a contributing property to the National Historical Landmarks, the Great Northern Railway Building District overall. Many Glacier Hotel is a member of the Historical Hotels of America, an official program for the National Trust of Historic Preservation. So it is an historical landmark. It's a historical building. It has a lot of rich history to it, even though it's only been around relatively for about 100 years or so. But it has that sort of... Uh, we give it like that like small towny type vibe to it. Now, the hotel did close down for a year back in 2020 due to COVID and all the lockdowns that were going on. However, it did reopen, so it did survive back in the summer of 2021. So it is perfect, so you can still definitely go and book a tour, book a visit to kind of bring in that quaint, rustic feel. Or you could go and you can experience all the ghosts that apparently this place has. And that's what we're going to use as a segue into the ghost stories, because good golly, this place has a lot more ghosts than I had originally ever anticipated. I was expecting a lot of maybe hotel workers, but I have a list. I have a list list, which I have not had in a good while when it comes to uh, haunted locations. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get into it. All right. So Overall, many people who visit the hotel, along with the surrounding buildings that make up the structure, describe a sensation just having a very eerie stillness to it. It's like a very magical type thing. I should say mystical, perhaps. It's just that general, like, mountainy vibe out in the wilderness type stuff. A lot of people give it the term of being, quote-unquote, alive, and that the location itself sort of has its own breath to it. It's a very interesting idea, and I, I can kind of understand it again. Um, I'm very much a city body overall. I love the city. I love living in the city. I love being in the city. So for me to transition into a more rural setting, there is kind of like an uneasiness to it, and I think perhaps that's what some people are actually having here. So let's get into the ghosts, and again, we have a list. First off, at the Lake McDonald Lodge, which is part of the overall structures of buildings, a woman dressed in an old-time clothes has been spotted by security uh, along with a night auditor, many times looking out over the lobby windows out into the lakeside uh, veranda. So she kind of hangs out on the lobby side and looks out into the night. Guests have heard a couple arguing loudly on the balconies that overhang the lobby, although there is no one there when you look up to actually see it. And a night auditor once more felt something run its hand or fingers through her hair one evening again in the lobby. One young boy had the surprise of his life when he was in his room. Again, this is his hotel room. A woman whom he did not know suddenly appeared and was standing in his hotel room wearing a red dress. And the moment in which she realized that he had spotted her, she vanished. In a very similar event, a horrified couple was complaining to the lobby clerk because the husband of the two was showering in their hotel room, and he turned around and encountered a young girl who was standing 
in the bathroom with him, and they left in such a hurry that apparently he was still soaking wet as they were packed up and standing in the lobby, which it's a weird story, but I kid you not that is like a legit nightmare fuel type thing because we've all done it. We've all done it when we were younger, and I'm sure some people do it now. I have still done it now when I'm like, am I alone in the house? Um, going into the bathroom and the shower curtain is closed and you're like, is there someone behind the shower curtain standing in the shower right now? Is there someone like hiding in the tub? You know what I mean? Like, or, or even if you're in the shower, you're like, is someone getting into the bathroom? Could I know if someone's getting into the bathroom right now with me? Like it's, it's like that weird core fear that we get when we're younger that I, the idea that it happened to someone is terrifying. And to a go with a ghost, nonetheless. I, I, I hate that. I hate that so much. So just outside of the park's western glacier entrance, uh, we're taking this outside away from the building, there is a well-known spirit that has become a bit of a prankster to those who have experienced him, and they have dubbed him the nickname of Bob. And Bob has earned his reputation across the Bolton Chalet in, uh, in particular, the building, by playing tricks on guests and hotel employees alike, stealing uh, room keys and jumping out and scaring guests. Other notable spirits that have been spotted throughout uh, the locations include a man in a top hat who appears in corridors throughout the building, a specter that is known to call the front desk and ask for more towels from inside a locked room, or a room where guests are not supposed to be, and uh, probably the greatest ghost that I have personally ever heard of and have had to talk about on here. There is apparently a spirit who is known to make coffee in the morning for members who are working early shifts. That is, I, there's nothing to say about it. That, that's the best. I, again, I have not really covered too many like helpful, friendly ghosts that actually do things, but the idea that there is a ghost out there that will brew you up some coffee. And it's just like, you know what? I know you're in an hour early. I know someone called out last minute and you're here to cover their morning shift. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's just perfect. That's just perfect to me. And I think that, I think that's just amazing. Whoever this ghost is, I, I'm sorry you're dead, but it's pretty awesome. So room uh, 308 is a highly active area. And I would argue is probably, aside from the lobby, probably the most active location in the hotel overall. It's, it's very impressive the amount of activity that this place has. On common, a lot of people hear very odd sounds coming from the room. A lot of this is uh, audio-based. Either people in their own rooms or people down the hall hearing a commotion coming from room 308. In addition of the strange sounds going on, people report seeing not one, not two, but several like a variety of entities that appear and disappear in or near the room, just going in and out, in and out, in and out. And some people even report that it is almost as if a party is being held in the room, particularly when the room should be vacant of guests. Very interesting. I don't know what happened in room 308 that this many people, spirits are still hanging out there. But apparently it's the place to be, especially if you are a ghost. So go to room 308 here at the uh, Many Glacier Hotel. All right, so for the next two or so, we have some retellings from individuals. Obviously, we had some early encounters with people who had reports, but these are more, I guess, quote-unquote notable people. So the former wintertime uh, caretaker by the name of Steve Lackenbach uh, keep in mind, from what I can understand, the hotel was not in service during the winter times. It's very much a spring slash summer resort. So guests were not here. I, I, there may be a few people here on the location, but it was not, you know, the height of their season. It was not when guests were coming in and uh, booking rooms. So Steve, uh, he passed away in 2008. However, he did have plenty of his own stories of suspected hauntings that were interviewed with him before his death. And on one of these occurrences, he explained that he had been making his rounds around the hotel again during the wintertime when he had discovered an empty wine bottle just sitting in the hallway. 
uh, when he did notice the glass, uh, the doors of the wine case were also wide open. So he realized that someone had obviously gone in and taken it out and emptied the wine glass. It wasn't like it was spilled anywhere. It was just an empty bottle now. At that given time, again, no guests were staying at the hotel for months. This was in the middle of the wintertime. There were no footsteps either in the fresh snow outside that had suggested to him that anyone had actually come to the property and the doors were locked. So he, rightfully so, probably assumed is either there's two options. One, someone has been staying in the hotel for months now and he has not noticed. Or two, one of the ghosts decided to get drunk. So I would argue the latter, but obviously either are possible, you know. And then last, there are some investigators that go to the location. There have been a few paranormal hunts of the hotel. And paranormal investigators who have stayed at the location overnight have also reported all sorts of odd activities. Obviously, some very similar ones to guests who stay there, odd sensations, odd noises. Um, However, the investigators have also reported a strange foul odor that seems to just suddenly fill the room that they are in and just kind of linger there until they leave. It's interesting. Uh, Someone may have just farted, but who knows. Books and other objects have also been reported to have moved or been knocked off their shelves from investigators who were staying at the location. And one uh, investigator in particular reported that they were even awoken in the middle of the night to what sounded like a gunshot being uh, sent off and... There was no gunshots reported. Like, other people didn't hear it. It was just her that woke her up. I could not find anything in particular that may point to where she was staying in the hotel at that time. Obviously, she was sleeping, but I don't know where she was sleeping. And I don't know of any reports in which a individual was shot at the hotel or died via gunshot wounds. I could not find that. That's information I could not pertain. Obviously, the hotel's been around for over 100 years now, just just barely, honestly. So it's possible, who knows? It, it's a long history. It's out in Montana. It's sort of like a one of those like pop-up type hotel resort areas that just happen. We have those up in like the, the Poconos over here, um, and they just kind of go in the wayside as the years go by. But it's interesting, and and I would definitely like to look into it a bit more to see if anyone maybe did report a very similar thing. This is the only instance in which I could find that particular account. But overall, it just seems to be a very active, very highly haunted type location that I had never heard of. And, you know, most of the haunted hotels that people talk about, you know, we talk about the Cecil Hotel. We talked about the uh, Hillview Manor even in Montana just earlier. You got a lot of those like bigger named ones out there, but I have not heard coverage for the many Glacier Hotel. And uh, I'm very happy that I did find it. It was very interesting to look into it and hear some of the stories that were popping up. Um, And it seems to just be a thing that people know about. Like they don't hide from it. Like people just know about it. It's very interesting. It's very refreshing. And I'm very glad that it was uh, the transition back into haunted locations here on the show. So I am very happy about that. But that's it. That's all about the uh, history and the ghost stories of the Many Glacier Hotel in the Glacier Lakes Park in Montana. And yeah, it's really great. And again, this was a Patreon poll winner. So if you guys do want to participate in those polls in order to help ease us into a potential episode theme or story, you could do so over on the Patreon. That's uh, patreon.com forward slash realm of unknown. Perfect transition. <laughs> Perfect segue into uh, shilling out the show. Uh, but yeah, we have, uh, if you do wish to support the show, you could do so in a variety of ways. Obviously, um, if you want to help out more so and in a more financial uh, capacity, you can do so over the Patreon. We have a $1, 3 and $5 tier list in which you get, again, these polls, which help you uh, to vote for new episodes of the main show. But you also get weekly bonus episodes, behind-the-scenes content, and, you know, teases as to projects that come before. And if you do the $5 tier list, you do get some additional goodies from investigations that I have been on within the Philly area. So definitely check it out. Um, We actually are going to be uploading a bonus episode after every single episode of the main show. So there will be a new one coming up after this. And I've got two stories that I want to talk about that I'm really excited for. Uh, So definitely go and check that out. 
And if you can't help out uh, financially, I totally get it. It's a weird time. It's a very, very weird time and very stressful time. But uh, if you want to help the show, a review would mean a lot, like a lot, a lot. I'm still trying to recover from the trolls that I rightfully angered over on YouTube that found me on uh, Spotify, but, you know, screw them, whatever. But, you know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Good Pod, wherever you listen to podcasts, if you could leave a review and share with some friends, that would be amazing. But yeah, that's all we have for today. Uh, You know, find us on social media, send us some stories via email, and I hope you guys have a really amazing time. And remember, remember to check out the um, two promotions that we had earlier in the episode for October Pods, as well as Dead Time Stories. Listen to both their podcasts, though their links will be in the description below in order to get to their main feeds if you wish to check them out. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, and I hope to see you next week. In the meantime, remember to stay spooky. Oh.